Ever since my initial Criterion review, I wanted to do an entire video that just focused on music-related titles. Um, I came across a bunch of them from the last couple of years or so that I thought were exceptionally well as far as music goes. Um, I was watching a bunch of Hitchcock films and they released this um, version of The Lodger, which is one of his earliest films around that same time. And um, my expectation was for the film was pretty low because I'm not really into his like really early stuff. Um, but as soon as I put the disc in, I was um, very surprised that the that the soundtrack music that was coming across was um, much better than uh, the titles I had heard in the past. And I found out that uh, Criterion actually uh, completely redid the soundtrack, and um, so that really impressed me with um, the direction they were going. And um, around the same time, I also got this um, um, Joan of Arc that had about um, three different soundtracks, um, I've, which I've never heard people do multiple soundtracks before. Um, and the fact that there was three of them is amazing. It, it had um, uh, one by the group uh, Portishead and uh, then a couple others that are more uh, like classical um, music. Yeah. Their version of 1984, which just came out this year, um, contains um, two different soundtracks. Um, one of them is um, with the uh, Eurythmics, and um, I guess uh, that was like an alternative uh, version um, that I don't think was included on as the original movie, but um, it's cool to have both of them here, just like they did with uh, the Joan of Arc release soundtrack. This next one I just thought was kind of funny because of one scene in the movie. It's called um, The Squid and the Whale, and it has uh, the son in this family. He goes to a talent show and he sings Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here, and he tells the audience that he wrote the song, <laughs> which, is, which to me, I, I, think it's funny how it's, it's such an obvious lie, you know, given that it came from such a popular album that so many people would be familiar with it. Like, why would somebody lie about something like that? So I just, just one of my favorite scenes from um, a movie that's also really good. Um, this next one um, was just kind of a blind buy for me. I didn't, I'd never heard anything about it but just decided to grab it at the last um, um, sale because it was uh, kind of based on a Scandinavian um, theme, which is um, what most people in my family are uh, made up of is uh, Swedish. And um, this is an extended version. It's about three hours long, and it has um, a lot of Scandinavian music that reminds me of visiting my grandmother's house uh, growing up. So um, just a, a lot of good memories with uh, a title like this. Uh, Elevator to the Gallows is, um, features uh, a soundtrack that has been improvised by Miles Davis. Um, the last maybe five, six, seven years, I've been getting more into jazz. And um, so it was great to see um, great jazz musician, uh, mixing with a uh, director that I've been watching quite a bit of, which is uh, Louis Malay. Um, this is probably maybe the third or fourth of his films that I've seen so far. And then another one that I'm pretty sure was improvised as well was this um, um, movie, uh, Dead Man by Neil Young. Um, Apparently, when they shot the film, uh, Neil was surrounded by a bunch of screens where he could watch it um, from all around him. And I especially like, I mean, the way that it opened and the way that um, the different scenes kind of faded in and out and how Neil worked the music into that. You know, both those titles are really great for musicians that I think just completely improvised. Uh, just watching the movie. Um, the uh, Three Color Trilogy has a, starts out with 
the first movie in the set, which is called Blue, and it's based around a widow of a composer, and um, it's about the wife having to deal with the death of her husband, and it's just it, it, the music in it is fantastic, and just the visuals and it's just exceptionally done. This was the uh, director's last uh, movies. And um, it's just a fantastic set. Uh, the next movie, Carnival of Souls, is about a, a church organist who is being haunted by this kind of ghoul-like creature. And um, um, it's just done on, I guess it was done on a kind of a budget, but it's, I would have never have known that. It's done exceptionally well. Um, the it has this it, a lot of the movie has this really spooky atmosphere where you have this organ playing but there's no it kind of cuts out a lot of the um uh regular noises you would hear in everyday life like you know cars driving by or people talking or you know it it, it just cuts all that noise and just has the the organ and um i guess it just kind of creates this atmosphere of, I don't know, just kind of a dreamlike atmosphere, I guess. Um, and um, yeah, it just, it works incredibly well with the, uh, with this movie. Um, so the next one, um, Sorcerer, is not on Criterion, but it's based on a Criterion title called The Wages of Fear. I like this one a bit better than that title because it, has this great uh, synthesizer soundtrack um, that uh, is by the group Tangerine Dream. Um, I just think the whole uh, the way that it was shot in color, you know, works well for all the explosions and stuff. And I just um, it's a really good remake in an age where a lot of people are just getting tired of remakes and like, oh, there's another. You know, we have to go see this film that's already been made several times, and you know, people keep complaining about that. But this is an exceptional remake. I, um, apparently, wasn't a big hit at the time, but um, it's really worth checking out um, if you're into action films. Um, the last one is there's a going to be a new Blind Melon film that I think is going to come out this year, um, and. Um, I'm really excited about that because this album that is called Soup is one of my favorite albums growing up. And um, here's the inside of it. It's kind of a, this um, album came in this kind of menu type uh, enclosure when it first came out. So, which I think is kind of cool. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited about this movie because um, the singer apparently just recorded lots and lots of hours of video footage uh, before he died in 1995. And um, even though, unfortunately, I'll never get another album from this band, um, at least I could see a little insight to what more of what this group was about. I uh, read their book a couple of years ago, and um, you know, that provided a lot of interesting insight to this movie, that uh, this uh, album that I uh, really loved growing up. And um, I'll be excited to see where uh, the um, what this movie is like when it comes out. It's called um, All That I Can Say. And um, so, yeah, that's all I got to say about this review. Um, so I hope you liked it. I hope you learned stuff. And um, thanks for watching.